softer than it seems We were just two kids Who were trying to live the teenage dream We could see no reason But we should ever try to go to sleep I wish that I could live that dream Live that dream again Said we'd be on forever You taught me how to love And nothing could be better than you and me You and me, baby, it was you and me We can never fall And nobody could break us Yeah, I thought we had it all Take me back to when it was you and me You and me, baby, it was you and me Yeah, I thought we had it all Take me back to when it was you and me You and me, baby, it was you and me
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Will you please bow your heads for the opening prayer? Most gracious and holy Heavenly Father, we come to you this momentous evening to say thank you. Thank you for each and every family represented here tonight, and thank you for each and every student seated before me. We pray, Father, that every seed we planted in their young lives grows into mighty witnesses for your glory. We pray that we, have been, that we have given them the knowledge and tools to go into the world and do great things in your name. We thank you for the years of trial and turmoil, joy and pain, love and laughter that have brought these young men and women to this point in their lives. We know that everything good or bad has been used to shape them into the young men and women we see now. We ask, Father, that you continue to work in their lives, molding, shaping, and guiding them for your will. We pray that they never forget you are walking beside them every day, and they have only to ask you for help and guidance. Now, as we continue to honor them tonight, Father, we pray that they remember everything that brought them to this moment and all the people who have supported them throughout the years and have come tonight to support them on this special night as well. We pray, God, that the dreams these young men and women have never die. We know you only want what is best for them and that when they put their faith and trust in you, you will give them the desires of their hearts. We ask that you take their dreams and transform them into reality for your honor and glory. We ask that they never forget to give back and to be the example, not the exception, and the light and salt to this dark world that you have called them to be. We thank you for all you have done in their lives and all you're getting ready to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. Good evening. I came up a few minutes ago, but I didn't say who I was. I'll go ahead and tell you now. I'm David Yuri. I'm the crazy guy that had the idea to start Lighthouse Christian School that God has blessed in spite of me. Before I introduce our speaker, I would like to introduce someone else, someone that's extremely important. If you here tonight are the parent, guardian, or grandparent of one of the graduates, would you please stand up? I want to say thank you for entrusting us with one of the most prized possessions that God has ever given to you, your child. I do not take it lightly that we have students that call Lighthouse Christian School their home. This is very serious for me. This is not something I do just to have a job, but God's told me to do this. This is a calling. I love this. I'm thankful. And the fact that you would entrust us to look after your child. I pray that we have made a difference in their lives and in your lives as well, that because of their time here, their life on this earth will be better. And most importantly, I pray that they'll have an eternal life because they have a relationship with Jesus Christ as their Savior and their Lord. I also would like to ask all of our staff, all of our family at Lighthouse, please stand. Many times I get the accolades. People come up here and tell me what a great thing I've done. I have people say, oh, they saw my commercial. Thank you for what you've done. And I tell them, I said, yeah, I don't really do that much. I am the guy that started it. But these people that you just saw, that's Lighthouse Christian School. They are the ones that make us the success that we are. Those people, whether it's someone who works in the office, whether it's the teacher, the director of a campus, we would not be who we are without those people. Trust me, if I was Lighthouse Christian School, none of this would be going on. God has blessed me far beyond my abilities, which I believe is the way God is. God wants to take us and have us accomplish something that there's no way in the world we could do, but with him we can do anything and everything. Amen? Amen. Our speaker tonight is Rocky Morse, I guess Rockwell Morse. I call him Rockwell sometimes, that's your official name. My problem tonight is Rocky's not just a speaker, he's a friend. He's a very good friend. And I realized just before I came up, I said, I didn't get a bio on you. I always have a bio to read the professional. 
So I just have to talk about some things I know. There's a neat guy. He's been in Jacksonville for many years. Back in his younger days, he was a famous star going around singing his family. What was your official name of the family? Singing Morris family. Uh, there's his, there's Ricky, Randy, Rocky, Renee and, Ronnie. Renee and Ronnie. And they would go around singing all over the state, I guess maybe even all over the country. That's how he met his wife when he sang one place and she saw him and she fell in love and nothing would satisfy her except to marry him. <laughs> we do have a problem though. Rocky's a neat guy, but he's a pastor. I told him we have 15 minutes to, to speak. Hopefully within a couple of hours he will be through. <laughs> he is a pastor of our church, my church, Grace Chapel Christian Fellowship. Grace Chapel is a covering. It's a spiritual covering for Lighthouse. I believe in having the spiritual authority. I believe in that accountability, and that's one of the things I look to Rocky. I've learned so much from he and Terry. Uh, he mentors me. He speaks into my life, and so therefore I'm able to be better at what I do. Rocky, thank you for everything you've done, for being my friend. Come share with us. Well, hello, everyone. So David warned you, could be a couple of hours, but it won't, I promise you. So, an exciting time tonight. Uh, as David mentioned, um, uh, actually, my family, we traveled and sang for years and years, the Singing Morris family. We actually sang here many, many times, about 40 years ago. And uh, I met Terry, my beautiful bride, uh, back in the hall of Wolfson High School back in 1980. And uh, we uh, got married nearly 35 years ago. We have six children, six grandchildren, and expecting our seventh. And uh, we are thrilled to, um, to be a part of Lighthouse and what all uh, David and Lighthouse Christian School has accomplished. And congratulations to the graduating class. This is, um, this is no doubt, I, hopefully it's an exciting time for you, and I know a lot of you are just going, Whew. you know, you're done with it, you're ready to get on uh, from high school, and uh, we're proud of you, we're excited for you. And uh, when I was thinking about what I was going to share tonight, David asked me about a month ago to start putting some notes together for, the, for this, I was praying I was thinking, I was praying, I was thinking, I jotted some things down, I tore up things, I scratched things, I deleted stuff and, and rewrote a bunch of stuff. And then I finally thought, all right, I'm gonna put down some things uh, that I wish someone had spoken to me when I graduated nearly four decades ago. And then it dawned on me, oh yeah, they did put those things down and said those to us when I graduated nearly four decades ago. But back then, I was just too full of myself. I was too arrogant. I was, I was just a jerk. And I didn't take it to heart. And so I, I've got to warn you. So as I, was, as, as I was preparing these notes, I was praying and I was just asking the Lord that tonight something would sink in. Maybe not just for you guys, but for all of us. Um, I believe that, that what I want to share over the next two hours will, um, just a few minutes, will uh, inspire, will uh, change a life perhaps. How many of you graduating seniors, you want to be successful in life? Come on, I want to see them. Thank you, Mom. I think we had 100% participation. That's good. So, all right, so here's the deal. So for the next few minutes, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna direct all these to the, the graduating class. So for the next few minutes, seniors, I want you to particularly pay close attention. I want you to sit up, pay attention, and receive what, thank you. They're listening. It's better than my kids. And receive what I'm about to tell you. All right, so here are just a few life lessons. Learn to sit up. Don't slouch. Pretty good. 
Look people in the eye when you talk to them and when they talk to you. Amen? Amen. Just stay with me. <laughs> well, by the way, I don't know if David warned you or not. Uh, he didn't while I was sitting down there, but I, I'm a straight shooter. I, uh, I tend to be really transparent. Is that okay? Okay, next one. Guys, pull your pants up. I knew that would get you. Girls, keep your pants on. <laughs> Can I hear an amen? Thank you. Expand your horizons. If you always surround yourself with people who talk like you, people who walk like you, people who think like you, people who eat like you, who, who eat what you eat and do everything like you, then you'll struggle in life to really grow. Thank you. <laughs> Listen. Be bold. Take more risks. Don't be afraid of taking chances in life. Listen twice as much as you speak. God created us with two ears and one mouth. Mathematics. <laughs> Spend less than what you make. Return everything you borrow. Stop blaming other people. Come on, folks. Admit it when you make a mistake. Give away clothes that you haven't worn to charity. <laughs> Dave, you just did that, didn't you? Bunch of them. Do something nice and try not to get caught. Right? Every day, take a long walk and pray. So I, I love this Lighthouse Christian School. You know, it is Christian for a reason. We believe that Jesus is the Savior of the world. Okay? Hopefully, you guys got that. That's why Christian's in the name. <laughs> Learn to pray. Jesus wants to be Lord of your life. Take a long walk every day. Pray. Ask the Lord to, uh, to bless you and to bless your day. Build intimacy with him. Read every day. If you know how to read, and I know you do, teachers, <laughs> if you know how to read and you don't, you're no better off than the person who doesn't know how. So read every day. The most successful people in life are readers, daily readers. Here's one, be on time. I was always told if, you, if you're starting at seven o'clock and you arrive at seven o'clock, you're late. Strive for excellence, not perfection. You'll never be perfect. So stop trying to be perfect. Be excellent. Right? Because my idea of perfection isn't the same as yours. Thank the Lord. And yours isn't the same as your neighbor's. So strive for excellence. Don't make excuses. Honor old people and especially your parents, seniors. Get organized and stay organized. Surprised I didn't hear the moms a little louder there. <laughs> be kind to people. Be kind to unkind people. Let someone cut ahead of you in line. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Try it. Take time to be alone. Cultivate and practice good manners including 
eat with your mouth closed. No one wants to see it. <laughs> David's down there, oh my gosh, what have I done? Be humble. Accept the fact that life, accept the fact that life just isn't fair. Life just isn't fair. No one owes you anything. Learn to know when to keep your mouth shut. <laughs> you can tell all the parents who've had an argument today. With... <laughs> Learn to know when to speak up. There's a balance. Go an entire day without criticizing someone. These are pretty simple, pretty basic. Learn from the past. They say experience is the best teacher as long as it's someone else's experience. <laughs> right? Learn from the experiences. Plan for the future, but live in the present. There's so many people who plan for the future and they, they try to live in the future and they forget to live in the present. And you'll lose out in life. Don't sweat the small stuff. And by the way, it's all small stuff. And the last one is, don't ever lose hope. So, so I read a story uh, years ago about some scientists that uh, were doing a study on the Norwegian wharf rat. You guys have probably heard about that, right? <laughs> Anybody heard about the Norwegian wharf rat? You know what a Norwegian wharf rat is? It's a rat that lives in the wharfs of Norway. Right? So for the study, the scientists took this group of rats and placed each of them in a tub of water and then continued to spray the tubs so that the rats couldn't just roll over and float on their backs, but rather they were forced to swim. This is a true story. After just 17 minutes of swimming, the rats ended up dying. So then the scientists took another group of Norwegian wharf rats and repeated the same exact experiment, only this time, after about 16 minutes, just as the rats were about to die, they removed the rats from the tubs, they dried them off, placed them in their cages, and fed them, allowing the rats to recover for a few days and live a normal rat life again. Whatever that looks like. After a few days had passed, the rats were put back into the tubs of water under the same conditions as the original experiment. Only this time, the rats swam for more than 37 hours before they died. It's true. The scientists concluded that the reason the rats were able to endure for a much longer period of time is because they had a salvation experience which led them to hope for a repeat of the same salvation experience. The rats were able to swim 37 hours instead of 17 minutes because they had hope, the hope of salvation. Understand the importance of the findings of this experiment. It wasn't that the second group of rats was stronger than the first group or that they were in better physical condition that enabled them to swim for 37 hours instead of 17 minutes. It was that the second group of rats had hope while the first group didn't. That, graduating seniors, was the difference. There were a whole bunch of graduating seniors that went ahead of you that didn't have hope, and tonight, our prayer is, is that you walk out of here with hope. 
It's all about hope. Hope for a great future. Now listen, when you face difficulties, and they will come, amen? And you want to quit or give in or give up, remember the living hope of your salvation. Ask yourself this. Again, this is Lighthouse Christian School. I know at Lighthouse, every is it every day you have chapel service? All right, every day you have chapel service. The kids are going, yeah, we have chapel Every day you've got chapel service. And I know sometimes it's just You know, you're going through the motions. But hopefully there was something that was said where one day you said, all right, Lord, I don't know about this whole Jesus thing, but man, I I like the idea of salvation. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Hopefully you've done that. Hopefully you have the hope of salvation. But ask yourself this. How were those Christians before you able to endure their martyrdom? when they were boiled in oil, dipped in wax, and burned as torches, cut in half, dragged behind chariots, and fed to the lions? Where did that strength come from to stand firm, press through and endure those inflictions? It wasn't of them or any other strength or any other thing that strengthened them to endure. It was the living hope of salvation and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that carried them all the way through it. And it will carry you through as well. So tonight, graduating seniors, as you receive your diplomas in just a couple of minutes, and you leave here tonight, and you set out on this thing we call life, remember what the Apostle Peter said in his first epistle. He said, so... Prepare your minds for action and exercise self-control. Put all your hope in the gracious salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. So graduating seniors, I salute you. Congratulations to you and blessings to you all. Connor Adams. Ephesians 6, 7, serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not men. Connor Adams. Andrew Austin. Romans 12, 3. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. Andrew Austin. Matthew Austin. Jeremiah 119, they will fight against you, but you, but will not overcome you, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Matthew Austin. Brandon Baxter. Romans 8.30. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. Brandon Baxter. Brandon Bean. Jeremiah 1.5. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Brandon Bean. Bradley Benson. Hosea 10, 12. Sow for yourself righteousness, reap the fruit of unfailing love, 
and break up your unplowed ground. For it is time to seek the Lord until he comes and showers righteousness on you. Bradley Benson. Marquise Bolton. Proverbs 7, 2. Keep my commandments and you will live. Guard my teachings as the apple of your eye. Marquise Bolton. Emmanuel Booker. 1 Corinthians 11:12. For as woman came from man, so also man is born of woman. But everything comes from God. Emmanuel Booker. Tyler Brooks. 1 Corinthians 11:24. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Tyler Brooks. Austin Buck. 1 Corinthians 2:9. However, as it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. Austin Buck. Jeremiah Birch. Romans 7.22. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law. <laughs> Jeremiah Birch. <laughs> Ian Catasuelo. <laughs> Hebrews 9.14. How much more then will the blood of Christ, who through eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God? <laughs> Ian Carasquillo. <laughs> Ashley Carrion. <laughs> Proverbs 11.8. The righteous man is rescued from trouble, and it comes on the wicked instead. <laughs> Ashley Carrion. Bryce Carter. 1 Corinthians 1.31. Therefore, as it is written, let him who boasts Boast in the Lord. Bryce Carter. Ronald Cash. 1 John 4.11. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Ronald. Ronald Cash. Tyrese Cheney. Romans 6.14. For sin shall not be your master, because you are not under law, but under grace. Tyrese Cheney. Jacob Cleland. 
Luke 9, 22. And he said, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and teachers of the law. And he must be killed, and on the third day be raised to life. Jacob Cleland. Marcus Clyde. Romans 12, 3. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. Marcus Clyde. Sydney Ellis. Habakkuk 319. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to go on the heights. Sydney Ellis. Nicholas Fawcett. Hebrews 2.18 because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. Hey. Nicholas Fawcett. <laughs> Nathan Gallant. <laughs> Ephesians 2.8. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. Nathan Gallant. Brooke Gordon. Philippians 4.8. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, Whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Brooke Gordon. Parker Green. 1 Samuel 12, 24. But be sure to fear the Lord and serve him faithfully with all your heart, consider what great things he has done for you. <laughs> Parker Green. Matthew Hankey. Luke 6, 28. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Matthew Hankey. Kevin Higgins. Lamentations 3.22. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. Kevin Higgins. Naya Heisen. Titus 3, 5. He saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. Naya Heisen. Carlos Hobbs, Genesis 1, 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let him rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. Carlos Hobbs. Ryan Holloway, Luke 9, 22. And he said, 
The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and teachers of the law, and he must be killed. But on the third day, he will be raised to life. Ryan Holloway. Brooke James. Romans 8, 5. Those who live according to the sinful nature have their minds set on what that nature desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. Brooke James. Clifford Johnson III. John 3, 21. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. Clifford Johnson III. Najuana Jones. John 12, 26. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My Father will honor the one who serves me. Najuana Jones. Stephen Kelsey II. Philippians 4.8. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Stephen Kelsey II. Kylie Kiefer. Romans 5.8. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. <laughs> Kylie Kiefer. Jacob Lathrop. Acts eleven sixteen. Then I remembered what the Lord had said. John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Jacob Lathrop. Yeah. Amari Leith. Yeah. Mark 12, 29. The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Amari Leith. Joshua McKenzie. First John 4, 17. In this way, love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. Because in this world, we are like him. Joshua McKenzie. Zion McNeil. Nehemiah 917. But you are a forgiving God, gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love. Zion McNeil. Alexis Minton. Galatians 3.27. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. Yeah, right. <laughs> 
Alexis Minton. Devin Moody. 1 Peter 2.25. For you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Devin Moody. John Moore. John 9.30. The man answered, now that is remarkable. You don't know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. John Moore. Tyler Owens. Hebrews 10:19. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus. Tyler Owens. Hallie Pallas. Ephesians 2.8, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. <laughs> Hallie Pallas. Christopher Palmer. 1 John 2.17. The world and its desires pass away, but the man who does the will of God lives forever. Christopher Palmer. James Powell IV. Matthew 12, 18. Here is my servant, whom I have chosen, the one I love, in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him, and he will proclaim justice to the nations. James Powell IV. Michaela Rankin. Ephesians 4.1. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of calling you, you have received. Michaela Rankin. Jamichael Rivera. 1 Corinthians 6.17. But he who unites himself with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Jamichael Rivera. Christopher Shaw, Proverbs 2.7. He holds victory in store for the upright. He is a shield to those whose walk is blameless. Christopher Shaw. Jacory Shaw. Romans 8, 26. In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness, we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. Jacory Shaw. Cheyenne Schumann. 2 Corinthians 10.5 We demolish arguments 
and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. <laughs> Cheyenne Schumann. Jade Simmons. First Corinthians 131. Therefore, as it is written, let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. Jade Simmons. Takaya Smiley. Ephesians 2.5. Alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions, it is by grace you have been saved. <laughs> Takaya Smiley. Elena Strickland, Philippians 3.14. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. <laughs> Elena Strickland. <laughs> Kayla Tanner. <laughs> Psalm 710. My shield is God most high, who saves the upright in heart. Kayla Tanner. <laughs> Destiny Taylor Jackson. 1 John 2.17. The world and its desires pass away, but the man who does the will of God lives forever. <laughs> Destiny Taylor Jackson. Logan Taylor. <laughs> Jeremiah 1.5. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. <laughs> Logan Taylor. Talia Taylor, Deuteronomy 5.29. Oh, that their hearts would be inclined to fear me and keep all my commands always, so that it might go well with them and their children forever. Right. Talia Taylor. Brianna Thigpen. Proverbs 4.22. For they are life to those who find them and health to a man's whole body. Brianna Thigpen. Aaliyah Thomas. 1 John 4.12 No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and His love is made complete in us. Aaliyah Thomas Keely Thompson Colossians 3, 4. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Keely Thompson. Frederica Vondertrink. 1 John 4, 20. 
If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, who he has not seen. Frederica Vondertrink. DeMonte Washington. Psalm 3.3. 3. But you are a shield around me, O Lord. You bestow glory on me and lift up my head. DeMonte Washington. Tristan Webb. Ecclesiastes 3.11. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the hearts of men. Yet they cannot fathom what God has done from the beginning to end. Tristan Webb. Damien Whiten. Romans 8.2 because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. Damian Whiten. Elisha Williams. Romans 8.4. The righteous requirements of the law might fully be met in us, who do not live according to the sinful nature, but according to the spirit. Elisha Williams. Kristen Williamson. Romans 8, 17. Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. Kristen Williamson. Logan Williamson. 2 Timothy 2.15. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a workman who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. Logan Williamson. Rihanna Williamson, 1 Peter 1.3. Praise be to the God of Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Rihanna Williamson. Paul Wright II. <laughs> Hebrews 12, 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by a, such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. <laughs> Paul Wright II. Would the class of 2018 please stand up? We gotta make it official, folks. On behalf of the state of Florida, it is my honor and my privilege to accept this graduating class of 2018. The students before you have satisfactorily completed all requirements for their high school <coughs> diplomas and graduation. And now graduates, the time you have been waiting for, you may turn those tassels.
before we head out, we want to close this evening in prayer. So join me in prayer. Father God, we come before your throne with boldness and with thanksgiving. I thank you for each of these seniors that have graduated this evening. Thank you for the families. Thank you for the sacrifices that have gone in to this evening. Thank you for those who have worked so hard on the other side, teaching, training, mentoring, helping in each and every way possible. I pray now, Lord, as they go from this building, from this church, from this school, and on into life, that they would be led and empowered by your Holy Spirit. I pray that wherever they go, people would see you, dear Lord, when they see them. I pray that we would be a light to all the world because we have the power of the Holy Spirit inside of us. Now, Father, I pray that everything about this evening has been pleasing and acceptable in your sight. I pray all these things in the name of our Savior, Jesus. Amen. Uh, it feels good. I finally made it. Um, finally get to start life. Everything good. I want to build cars. I, I, God is always first. And I'm just looking forward to move towards the future. I'm happy that I'm just done with high school, period. It's like the best moment of my entire life. I've been waiting on this since eighth grade. What are you going to do that? I'm going to go to FSCJ and do general studies because I don't know what I want to do yet. It feels great. It feels good for his papa. That's what it feels like. It feels amazing. Thanks, guys. Right. What are you going to do next? Uh, college. college. Where are you going to go? Uh, World Life Bible Institute of Florida. I've been waiting so long like to graduate. Honestly, it's like a lot of hard work and effort had to be put in. But I finally made it, and I'm very happy. Congratulations. What are you going to do next? Um, probably not going to college. I'm going to rest for a little bit. And then after a while, I'll probably like maybe go into something like welding or maybe go into the medical field. Biggest day of my life. What are you gonna do next? I'm she's gonna... going to Disney World. <laughs> yeah, she's cute. <laughs> I'm gonna go to massage school. It feels awesome. I feel really accomplished. I want to thank my mom and my dad and the rest of my family for helping me out. It feels amazingly awesome. I'm excited. Can't wait to see what the future has in store. I'm gonna look for a job after I get done. <laughs> It feels awesome. Starting a new journey is just so wonderful feeling. Feel honored. What are you going to do next? Going to go to college, going to continue working and trust the Lord and everything else. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations.